Hi everyone, welcome back to That Girl's Yoga YouTube channel. I'm Cindy Shapiro and I'm going to guide you today through a gentle flow yoga practice. If you'd like to grab some props, you can grab a strap or maybe a belt or a towel will work as well. Uh, two blocks if you have them, you can also get away with one block or no blocks at all. And also a blanket either a Mexican blanket if you have one or a bath towel will work as well. Now the key for class today is to really honor where you are and to just notice when there are moments that you need to back off a little bit or notice when there are moments that you want to go a little deeper into your practice. Gentle flow yoga is a really nice practice because it teaches us where we need to back off or go deeper. And it really invites us to drop into down regulation. Down regulation is really important, especially in these times as you know, we are all learning how to live at home. And these times when we're learning new techniques, it can be really challenging to really feel comfortable in, in those moments. And this practice invites that awareness of how to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. If you need to place me on hold, please do so, so that you can go and find your props. We're gonna start off on the back, one of my favorite places to start off in a gentle flow yoga practice. If you have a blanket, you'll see that I have my blanket here, so I can rest my head down onto the blanket. I want to make sure that my shoulders are not on the blanket. So make sure that the shoulders are free of the blanket and that your strap is over by the right hand side of your mat and that your blocks are close by. You'll see that I placed my blocks over here so that they are close by and I can use them to assist me in this practice. Lower down onto your back and take a moment with the knees bent and the feet to the mat close the eyes and place your left hand onto your heart. And begin to tune into the breath. Let your right arm rest off by the side, back of the hand onto the floor so that the right palm is facing toward the sky. And just feel the gentle beating of your heart under your left hand. Notice the natural rhythm of your breath. And as you take this time to tune into the breath, notice how it naturally slows as we bring our attention to the breath. In Sanskrit, our breath is called prana. Prana is life. And prana is also an energy. It's an energy that moves through our body. This energy is produced each time we take a breath in and release the breath. It's also produced from the foods that we consume, the water. And this energy is something that can shift with the thoughts in our mind. Take a moment to allow yourself to gather your thoughts. Notice how you felt this last week. Did you maybe do a few different things than what you normally do? I know some of us have been working on our homes, doing some honeydew projects. And some of us have been really enjoying time to read some books, spending extra time with family, maybe gardening, sewing, quilting, knitting, all the various things that we enjoy doing. And you might have worked from home or have an essential job whatever it is that you did this week, just acknowledge. And invite what you did this week to be enough. Today 
we'll be focusing on balance and how we create balance in our lives when there's a situation that can make us feel unbalanced. Now take your right hand and place it onto the belly and that's going to help the body to feel a little more balanced as you sense the weight of the hands on the body. Notice that the breath has shifted. Do you feel a little bit more supported having both hands on the body? And can you take a full breath into the belly? Notice the hand on the belly as it gently rose. Exhale to blow the air out of the lips and feel the hand on the belly soften and the hand on the heart soften. Inhale, breathe in, feel the hand on the belly expand. Notice the ribs, notice how they lift, rise and expand and how the chest has a gentle lift and rise. Exhale, blow the air out of the lips and feel the hand on the chest, the ribs and the belly soften. Take three more rounds exploring this cleansing breath. how the exhale breath can actually create an awareness of grounding. How the exhale breath helps us to feel rooted in this practice. Release that last exhale. Come back to the natural rhythm of your breath in and out of the nose. If you have a variation of Ujjayi breath, also known as victorious breath, what you'll do is you'll constrict the muscles in the back of the throat and you'll make a, a little bit of a deeper breathing sound on the inhale. And continue with that deeper sound on the exhale. Take four more rounds, really noticing and cultivating this Ujjayi breath. Continue with your Ujjayi breath or a breath that's going to feel the most beneficial for you. As you take a moment to just acknowledge how your physical body is feeling in this moment. Notice any noises you might hear outside the room, outside your house. Allow those noises to be there, but invite your awareness to get further and further away from those noises as you check in with the muscles in the face. Soften the space between the eyebrows and the skin across the forehead. Relax and soften through the jaw. Feel your collarbones broaden and the shoulders as they gently release away from the ears. Take that gaze and allow that inner gaze to drop in toward the heart center. Look inside your heart and notice and observe how the heart is always beating and always there for you just as it's been from day one. And take a moment to set an intention for your practice today. Basing that intention on anything that you might feel in your heart that you would like to bring into this practice. Once you have that intention set, let's set an intention to stay in a space of loving kindness towards ourselves. Allow yourself to be the witness and the observer through the practice. Witnessing and observing all the space that you can make through the awareness of your breath. Gentle flow yoga is not creating a stretch. Gentle flow yoga is finding space. It's acknowledging and noticing and observing where you can find that space within your 
physical body and how you can find the connection of the breath to the body and to the mind. This is called yoga. Yo in Sanskrit means yoke and ga means to bring together. Invite your knees to come into your chest and take a little rock side to side to massage the back. Hold on either to the shins, the kneecaps, or behind the thighs, whichever feels most comfortable for you. Keep the eyes closed if you feel comfortable with that awareness. And transition into wide knee circles. Let the big toes come together to touch. Place your hands to your kneecaps. Open the knees out wide. Then extend out in front of you. When the knees come together, bring them into the chest. Continue with the circular motion. Sense the awareness as we release synovial fluid through the hip flexors. Synovial fluid will aid and guide our hips to find space and to release any of that tension and tightness that you might be holding on to or carrying around in your body. Next time the knees come into the chest, extend hands and bend knees to arm's length. Open knees out wide, bring them back into the chest, and continue with this reverse direction. Sense breath in the belly. Sense each exhale, release onto the hips. Creating space, finding a release in the physical body. And the next time the knees come into the chest, lower your left foot down and lengthen your left leg long. Keep your right knee in towards your chest. Bring your forehead up to your right knee for Ardha Alvanasana. Inhale, lower head, neck and shoulders down. Exhale, lengthen the right leg, then the left knee. Hug the left knee into the chest. Take an inhale. Exhale, put forehead to the knee, Ardha Alvanasana. Inhale to a full body stretch, point fingers, point toes. Exhale, sigh all the air out of the body and give your body to the earth. Inhale, lengthen out long, full body stretch. Exhale, supine crescent moon. Walk your legs as far over to the left corner of the mat as it feels comfortable. Feel the back of the right hip still firmly rooted. Walk the arms as far over to the left as it feels comfortable. Now maybe the hands stay together or maybe they separate. It's really what you're going to feel in your body. What that experience is and, and what does this practice look like for you? You might want to take your right ankle and cross it over your left ankle. If you have any pain in the IT band, this outer edge of the, the right side of the hip, that would be your cue to just keep your toes pointing over toward the left and keep that back of the right hip still firmly rooted. Take a breath in through the nose and softly sigh all the air through the nose. Come on back to center on the inhale, full body stretch. As you exhale, sigh all the air out of the body, bend the elbows. Relax your body. Inhale to lengthen out long, full body stretch. Exhale, supine crescent moon. Walk the legs as far to the right as it feels comfortable and walk your arms as far to the right. Continue to keep the back of the left hip firmly rooted so that you can feel that nice space across the pelvis. Maybe you grab on with your right hand to your left fingers or possibly grab on to the elbows. Feel your collarbones broaden, the knit, the ribs knit down toward the hips. Take a breath in and sigh all the air out of the mouth. Walk the legs back to center, walk the arms back to center. Inhale to a full body stretch. Exhale, hug the knees into the chest, circle the knees together for sacral circles. Sense the release of the SI joints and the low back. Soften the muscles in the feet. Reverse your direction. Breathe 
breathe, notice and observe. Come on back to center, extend the legs and extend the arms or toward the ceiling. Make fists with the hands, roll out your wrists and roll out your ankles. Reverse the direction. Transition into Apanasana. Knees come into the chest. Forehead comes up to the knees. Squeeze into a nice tight little ball. Now notice your collarbone. Let them broaden. Release the shoulders back and down. Find the full length of the spine from the base of the skull all the way to the tailbone. Inhale, full body stretch. Point fingers, point toes. Exhale, sigh all the air out of the mouth. Bend into your right knee, bring your right foot to the mat. Bend into your left knee, bring your left foot to the mat. Bring right knee into the chest and make fists with your hands. We'll do a little bit of a myofascial release. So take your hands and you'll, you'll pound out the, the muscles here in the right leg. We'll get into the insides and the outside edge of the right thigh. You can get into the, the right gluteal muscle, lean a little bit to the left, and that'll give you some space to get in there. And then we'll continue maybe moving down to the, the sides of the calf, the back of the calf. Make sure that you skip the knee. And then bring your right knee into your chest. Cross right ankle over the left thigh for figure four. Take your arms and open them out wide to the sides. Rock the right knee to the right as you turn the head to the left. Come on back to center. Rock right foot to the left, turn the head to the right. Keep going at the pace of the breath. Movement can be very small here. Movement can be as deep as it feels comfortable in your body. Next time, your left knee and your right foot drop over to the right side of the mat, lower them down. If you need support under the knee or the foot, take a look at me and you'll see that I have a block underneath my left knee and my right foot. Now, if, it, if you can bring your knee and your foot all the way down and it doesn't cause you any pain, keep right ankle crossed, relax the bottom leg, the left leg, take your left arm, bring it across the body and place it to the center of the right thigh. Let your head gently turn to the right, inhale, Apply a little bit of pressure. Press your right thigh into your left fingertips as you resist at the same time. Bring the head to center. Exhale, turn your head to the left and gently press the right thigh away with the left fingertips. Inhale, bring the head to the center. A little bit of pressure on the thigh. Exhale, turn the head to the right, press the thigh away. Inhale, come on back to center, contract. Turn the head to the left, gently press the thigh away. Inhale, press the thigh into the hands and resist. Exhale, press the thigh away, roll your left foot back onto the mat. Transition into reclined pigeon pose. Pull the legs into the chest by clasping hands behind the back of the left thigh. More advanced is in front of the left shin. Invite head, neck and shoulders to relax and soften. As you breathe awareness into the right hip. If this feels a little challenging for you or uncomfortable in any way, this is where your strap will come in handy. You can take your strap and open it out. I like to fold it in half and I take that looped end and I keep the straps together, place it in between the opening of my, my thigh, my legs, and I bring it right behind my left thigh. And then I pull the legs into my chest, and that helps me to get into the space of my right thigh, my inner thigh muscles on the right leg, and the outer thigh muscles. Now, if that is feeling a little bit uncomfortable, you can always place a block underneath your left foot 
And this is a restorative version. If it feels nice, invite a little rock side to side. You can rock gently from right to center to left, or you can turn this into sacral circles. Now, if you're not sure how to do sacral circles with reclined pigeon, take a look at me. What I do first is I pull my left knee into my chest. It pulls the right leg in. Then I circle the right knee to the right, circle it out in front of me, left knee, right knee, circle to the left, and we come back into the chest. And we'll take three more rounds in this direction. We're going to reverse the direction. Take five rounds in the second direction. If it feels uncomfortable, please don't force yourself. Move in this opposite direction. A simple rock from side to side will still give your body a lot of space. Really nice. Come on back to center. Extend the right leg up toward the sky. Clasp your hands behind the back of the right thigh. Inhale to point the toes up toward the sky. Exhale to flex your foot. Press the heel up toward the sky. Feel all that length in the back of your right calf and your hamstring. Inhale to point. Notice that the space we're feeling in the ankle now and in the, the front of the shin. Exhale to flex. Three more rounds at the pace of your breath. Relax through the shoulders and the collarbones. to center, hug your right knee in towards your chest and roll your body over to its left hand side to come into a fetal position. Now I'm just turning this way for the sake of recording so that it's easier for you to see the side that I'm on. Now in the fetal position we want to create a 90 degree angle. In our 90 degree angle here we have our, our feet are stacked, the knees and the hips are stacked. The knees are directly out from the hip. And we're gonna take this uh, left arm and bend the elbow. You can place your blanket over it or place the arm over the blanket, however you wish to do it. Place your right hand on top of your right thigh. Keep your feet together. Clamshell, we open the right knee. Exhale, lower it down and completely relax all the muscles. Inhale again to open the knee. Exhale, lower down, completely relax. One more round, inhale to open. Exhale, lower down and completely relax. Next inhale, take your right leg and lift it up so it's right about hip height. Exhale, extend the right leg directly out in front of you. Press out through the heel so that the leg goes directly out from the hip. Inhale, bend the knee, let it hover at hip height. Exhale, lower down and completely relax. So you'll feel that we're warming up these muscles here. Inhale again, lift up at hip height. Exhale, extend, press the leg directly out. Inhale, bring it back in. These poses are, this pose is called um, fire hydrant. And then lower down and completely relax. Inhale again to lift up at a fire hydrant. Exhale, extend the leg, press out through the heel, feel the toes point toward the wall in front of the toes. Exhale, bend into the knee and lower back and down and completely relax. Send your right arm out in front of you. Take your left arm and lift it up toward the sky. Open left arm out to the side, follow it with your eyes. Inhale again to lift the arm up, bring it across the body. Two more rounds, inhale to lift. Exhale, bring it across and soften. Inhale to lift up. Keep going. Open out into a supine twist. So we're going to release the right shoulder down. Maybe knees are still stacked. If you feel any pain in the low back, a few things you can do. You can take a pillow 
a blanket or a block and place it in between the legs. And that helps to release some of that pressure you might be feeling in your back. Let your head gently turn to the right. And feel that the knees are pressing forward. Now the tailbone is pressing directly out in front of itself. And that right shoulder is releasing down as you feel the right ribs lengthen down toward the mat. Head can turn to the right. Take a breath in through the nose. Gently sigh the air out of the nose. Inhale to lift the right arm up toward the sky. Exhale to bring it across the body. Remove any prop you might have placed underneath in between your legs. Roll back onto your spine. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Take a little rock side to side. Massage the back. Second side, lower the right foot down. Keep left knee in toward the chest. Make fists with your hands and begin to pound out the fascia of the left thigh. Remember, you can lean a little bit to the right so you can get into that left glute. Sometimes we can get some really deep track energy in that left glute. Make sure you get into the inner thigh. Really important energy space to release some of that excess energy that can cause our balance to be off. Get into the back of the calf, the sides of the calf. Figure four, cross left angle over the right thigh. Let the arms open out wide. Keep them in line with the shoulders so that you feel that the palms face toward the sky. Let the left knee drop to the left and turn your head to the right. Come on back to center. Left foot to the right, head to the left. Do four more rounds on each side. That will be eight more rounds of breath. Take breath into the belly. Feel the belly expand on the inhale. And sense where you can find space on the exhale. Finish with that last round. We'll lower the right knee and the left foot toward the outer right edge of the mat. This is called a reclined pigeon twist pose. Now, if that doesn't feel comfortable, remember you can always use props under the knee or the foot. If they can drop down, relax the right leg. Take your right arm, bring it across the body, place it to the center of the right thigh. Let your head gently turn to the left. Inhale, bring the head to center. Slightly press the left thigh into the right hand as you resist. Uh, exhale, turn the head to the right. Gently press the thigh away. Inhale at center, contraction. Exhale, press the thigh away. Turn the head to the left. Inhale, come on back to center, contract. Exhale, press the thigh away. Turn the head to the right. Inhale, bring it on back to center. Exhale, transition, reclined pigeon pose. Now find your variation, hands or strap behind the right thigh. Maybe you go deeper and you bring the hands clasped over the front of the right shin. Notice if your left hip is bringing, giving you signals that you might not want to bring those hands over the shin Maybe you want to use a strap today and be really gentle or lower your right foot to a block or just lower it down to the mat with no, no support of a prop. Take breath into the belly. Exhale, soften into sensation. If you want to add a little bit of movement, a little rock side to side, or once again, those sacral circles. Each side's gonna feel a little different. So if you 
you've got one side that's saying, yeah, I don't think so. That's okay. Just kind of explore. Maybe you want to do those or a rock or maybe just nothing. to stillness, lower the right foot down, bring both knees into the chest, roll to your right hand side to come into a fetal position. Set yourself up, find those two right angles, we've got our, our 90 degree. So now 90 degree is the knees are directly in line with the hips. If the knees are too far into the chest, it's going to put too much pressure on the diaphragm. So we want to make sure that they're right in line with the hips here and that the legs are at that 90 degree. The right arm can come underneath the head or the blanket. And we'll place our left hand on top of the left thigh. Keep your feet together, clamshell open. This is external rotation. Exhale, relax and completely soften. Take two more rounds. Try to be mindful that you don't rush through the pose. All right, here comes, here comes our fun. It's always good to have a little bit of fun, regardless if it's gentle yoga or, or a level one, two. All right, here we go. Inhale, lift the leg up, find your fire hydrant. Exhale, extend the leg, try to go directly out from the hip so that we're still creating this straight line of energy. Inhale, bring the knee back into the chest, hover. Exhale, lower down and completely relax. Inhale again, lift up, fire hydrant. Exhale, press the leg out, flex through your foot. Feel everything that's working here. Inhale, bend the knee. And then exhale, lower all the way down and completely relax. Last round, bring it up, find your fire hydrant. Extend the leg out directly from the hip, flex to the heel. Inhale, bring it back in. And lower it back and down. Take your right arm, extend it out in front of you. Bring your left arm so that it's hovering just above the right arm. Inhale to lift the arm up. Exhale, bring it out, but don't come quite into your supine twist. Maybe the arm just hovers here. Lift it back up. Bring it back and over. Two more rounds. Lift on up. And open out. Lift on up. Bring it over. Inhale again, lift up. At the end of the exhale, open the left arm to come into your version of supine twist. Now, I didn't demo the blanket on the first side, but I'm going to demo the blanket for you this time. If you take a folded blanket and you place it in between the legs, you can bend your right elbow to give your head support. And then release that left arm over. And that's going to help release some of that pain that might happen in the low back. Maybe your head can turn over to the left as you release the left shoulder down. Take breath into the belly and sense as the breath moves into the belly, it sends space into the intercostal muscles, up into the pectoralis muscles, all the way through the left fingertips. If you don't need that extra support underneath the head, send your right arm out long. Take breath into the belly. Slide the ear out of the nose and soften. Lift left arm up toward the sky, bring it across the body to meet the right hand. Remove your blanket if you have a blanket or a block between the knees. Meet me in a tabletop pose. Maybe place a blanket underneath the knees if you need that extra support. Palms underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Begin to flow through your cat-cow. Round through the spine for cat pose. Feel the pubic bone point toward the belly button, the chin toward the chest. 
Inhale, let the tailbone lift for us and feel the energy move through the front of the body to help lift the head, broaden through the collarbones, expand through the heart, cow pose. Continue at the pace of your breath. Come on back to a neutral spine after your last exhale. And keep your knees about hips with distance. Circle your left hip over towards your left heel. Press both hips back toward the heels. Circle over to the right. Roll forward so that you're leaning over the hands. And continue with these oval circles. Breathe into the sides of the right and left hip. If your knees are feeling sensitive with this, you don't have to make your circles quite so big. They can be really small circles, like I'm demonstrating right now. The movement can be strictly with the pelvis. And then reverse your direction. Three more rounds. At the end of that third round, third exhale, press back, extended child's pose. Big toes come together to touch. Hips press back toward the heels. If you're feeling sensitive behind the backs of the knees, a really nice modification for that is to take your blanket and you can bring it right behind the box of the, the thighs and you can tuck it into the space behind the box of the knees and press your hips back. You're not going to get back quite as far with the hips, but this is going to be a lot more gentle for your knees if you're having some experiences there. Another thing you can do is you can take a blanket and you can press that blanket onto your thighs, press your hips back, and then let your head drop down. So there's many different ways that you can find some softness to help support your body. Big breath into the belly, feel the back body expand. Sigh all the air out of the mouth. Inhale for tabletop pose, grab onto your blocks. You'll set your blocks onto your mat so that they're directly out in front of you. If you need extra support and you have a blanket close by, grab onto your blanket and you'll place that uh, directly underneath your knees and that will help to support your knees. Take your right foot and step it forward for a low lunge. Take your blocks and walk them back towards your hips and press your right hand onto your right thigh and then feel that you're pressing the knee away from the hip. Press into the back leg, that's your left leg. If the toes are curled, you'll press into the big toe. If not, you'll press into the shin. Take your left hand, place it on top of the right hand. Gently press the right thigh away as you lift the chest. Tailbone is long. Place left fingertips to the left shoulder cap. Place right fingertips to the right shoulder cap. Inhale, circle the elbows up, down, and around. Exhale to release. Take two more rounds at the pace of your breath. Beautiful. Now take your left arm and lift it up toward the sky. And take your right arm and lift that up toward the sky. Remember, you have blocks here where you can place your hands back onto your thighs. Inhale to lengthen the arms up for Anjane Asana. Press into that back leg or the back toe. Exhale, bend the elbows, Prana Mudra, side it out, let your chest lift up. Lower the hands down onto the blocks. Lower the right knee down. Press back once more, extended child's pose. Take breath into the back body. Sigh the air out of the mouth. Inhale for tabletop, grab 
grab onto your blocks once more, send them out in front of you, step your left foot forward for a low lunge. Once you've got your left foot forward, the knee is right above the ankle, so you protect the knee joint. Walk your blocks back so that they're in line with your hips and your chest can lift nice and tall. Place your left fingertips to your left shoulder cap and the right fingertips to the right shoulder cap. Now we'll do the funky variation. So in order to get to that funky variation, we need to make sure that we're stable here. So there's a scissoring effect you can feel in your thighs and that back leg is stabilizing you, either the leg or the toe. Circle the elbows behind you, let them roll forward and then back down. Take two more rounds. Beautiful, with the arms up toward the sky. Interlace your fingers and then send the hands directly up above your head. Take a breath in, exhale, bend the elbows, sigh it out, Prana Mudra. Lower your hands onto your blocks. Set your blocks so that they're right in line with the left foot. Now we'll curl the right toes, lift the right knee up, we're in a runner's lunge. Step your right foot up to meet your left foot. Inhale for flat back and exhale fold. Step your left foot back, bend into your right knee. We're in another runner's lunge. Take a breath in here. Exhale, sigh all the air out of the nose. Bend into your left knee and step your left foot up for forward fold. Inhale, flat back, hands onto the shins or to the thighs for modified flat back. Exhale to fold. Generous bend into the knees, bring the hands to the thighs, press your chest up, Tadasana. Inhale, slip the arms up toward the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to release, bring hands in, Nihoi Heart Center. Inhale to lift the arms up. Exhale to circle the arms out wide. Beautiful, inhale again, lift up. Exhale, bring the hands in toward heart center. Now, steeple grip. Interlace your fingers, all but the index fingers. So we keep those index fingers pointing high and the thumb fingers together. Inhale to lengthen the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, lateral bend. Take your arms over to the right, press into the outer edge of the left hip. Inhale back to center. Exhale, hands into heart center for prayer pose. If that feels uncomfortable to do steeple grip, please don't force yourself. Inhale, let the arms lift. Now you can clasp the hands in the opposite awareness of steeple grip, so you still have it, but the pinkies are in a different area of other fingers. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lateral bend. Bring it on back to center. Bring the hands in toward heart center as you exhale. Release the arms down by your sides. Curl the fingers. Bend left elbow, lower right arm for a side body stretch. Come back to center, second side. Take breath into the belly once more. Feel how that breath expands into the ribs, up and toward the chest, as we create this spacious awareness in the side body. Inhale to lift arms up. Exhale to release and bring hands in toward heart center. Now lower your arms down by your sides and let your chin come into your chest. Now at the very tip of your nose, we're gonna draw a half smile. So you have a piece of chalk. I've seen my neighbor kids, they've been out drawing with chalk in the street and it's been so nice to see them drawing all these really nice um, sayings and stuff. But we're gonna be drawing a half smile. So you have that chalk on your nose. Next time you inhale, draw that half smile to the right. Let the nose and the chin circle up toward that right corner. As you exhale, release the nose and the chin back into the chest. Draw that half circle over to the left. Bring it on back to center. We'll take one more round to the right. Doesn't have to be a big movement. Back at center, one more round to the left. And bring it on back to center. 
Let your gaze face forward. Inhale to lift the arms up toward the sky. Exhale to release and bring hands in toward heart center. Now release your left arm down by your left leg. And take a look at your feet. Make sure that they're about hips width distance and there's a gentle bend into the knees. We don't want to hyperextend the knees because that cuts the energy in the body. Lift your right arm up toward the sky, bend the elbow, and place your right hand either just above the ear or over the ear. Inhale to lengthen, press into the outer edge of both feet, feel that the pelvis has lengthened. Exhale, lower the right ear to the right shoulder, and bend into the left elbow and rest your left hand at your low back. So it's going to look just like that. If that feels uncomfortable, you'll just keep your left arm down by your side. Take a sipping breath in through the lips. Nice, long S exhale. Sigh the air out of the clenched teeth. Soften through the left side of the neck. Release the right arm down. And bring the chin back into the chest. Bring your gaze forward. We'll move to the second side. First, inhale, Ardva Hastasana. Exhale to release, bring hands in toward heart center. Right arm is long, we lift left arm up. Wrap the arm over the head, maybe it's to the outside edge, above the ear or over the ear. Inhale to lengthen, take a soft bend into the knees. Exhale, lower left ear to left shoulder. Maybe you bend right elbow and bring it to the low back, the forearm and the back of the hand. Eyes can stay open or closed here. Release your right arm down. Lower your left arm down. Bring your chin into your chest. Let your gaze come forward. Lift the arms up toward the sky. Exhale to release. Bring hands in toward heart center. Make sure that your blocks are on your mat. And we'll step them so that they're a little wider than hips width. Inhale, let the arms up toward the sky. Exhale to release and bring hands in toward heart center. Let your hands come to your hips and bend your left knee. Now you can choose if you want to stay here with the knee bent or if you want to follow with the knee and lift the knee up so that you're balancing in stork pose. Take your left foot back. Bend into your right knee, runner's lunge, also known as modified warrior one. Arms will come behind you. You'll lean forward to set up the pose. You wanna press into the, the big toes and let the left heel lift. Inhale to lift the arms up toward the sky. And exhale to release, hands in toward heart center. Inhale, straighten through front leg, lift the arms up toward the sky. Exhale, bend into the knee, lower the hands down onto the blocks. Remember, if you need support for your left knee, we're in runner's lunge right now, you'll grab onto your blanket and place it underneath the left knee. If you need to walk that right foot forward to make sure the knee is over the ankle, please do so. Take a breath in, notice and observe the inner thighs scissoring together. Lower the left knee down. Walk your hands onto your thighs or walk your blocks back. Left arm will lift, right hand to the right hip. Lengthen on the inhale. Exhale, lateral bend over toward the right. Come back to center. Two more rounds if that feels comfortable for you. Bring it back to center, lift the right arm to meet left arm, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, bring the hands in toward heart center. Place your hands onto the blocks, curl your left toes, lift your left knee up, runner's lunge. Step left foot up to meet the right foot, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, down fold. Generous bend into the knees, bring the hands to the thighs. Press your chest up, lift arms up toward the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to release, hands in toward heart center. Second side, hands come to the hips, feet are about hips with distance. Either you bend into your right knee to create your variation of stork pose, 
or let the knee lift and take the arms out wide. Now bring the arms behind you and step your right foot back for runner, uh, crescent lunge pose. Lean a little bit forward, squeeze out our hips in together and feel the thighs scissoring towards each other. Lift the arms up, you're in crescent lunge, modified warrior one. Take a breath in and a breath out. Lower the hands down onto your blocks, runner's lunge. Maybe that left foot needs to come a little bit further forward or the right foot back. Take a breath here. Exhale, lower the right knee down to the blanket or directly to the mat. Walk your hands onto your left thigh or keep them onto your blocks if you need that support. Right arm lifts. Left hand to left hip or stays on the thigh or to the block. Lengthen on the inhale. Lower over for lateral bend. Exhale. Two more rounds. Nice. Bring it on back to center. Lower right hand onto the block. Lower left hand onto the block. Let your right knee lift for runner's lunge. Step right foot up to main left foot and set your blocks off to the side. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, down fold. Generous bend into the knees. Hands come to the thighs. Press your chest up. Lift arms up toward the sky. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to release and bring hands in toward heart center. Now bring your arms down by your sides. We're going to do a posture that's called palm tree pose. Palm tree pose can seem really simple at first, but once we get into it, especially if you're on carpet, it can be a little challenging. So when you inhale, you'll come up onto your tiptoes, keep your arms down to begin, and try to squeeze those inner ankles in together as best as you can. Keep your chest lifted and your tailbone long, and lower the heels back and down. We're gonna do a little bit of a standing vinyasa. If this feels challenging for you, omit the arms. Inhale, palm tree, let the arms lift if you're following that variation, squeeze the ankles in. Exhale, lower the heels down, bring the hands into heart center, bend at your knees, hinge at your hips, forward fold. Inhale, flat back, either hand to the shins or to the thighs. Exhale to fold. Bend into the knees with the neutral spine, with the arms up toward the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to release, bring hands in toward heart center. Two more rounds. Inhale, palm tree or omit the arms. Exhale, lower the heels first. Hands into heart center, bend at the hips. I mean, hinge at the hips, bend in the knees, excuse me. <laughs> Inhale, flat back, your version, extend through the spine. Exhale to fold. Neutral spine, either bend into the knees or no bend, but press into the feet to help your sternum lift. Arms up toward the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands in toward heart center. One last round. Inhale for palm tree with or without arms. Exhale, lower to the heels, hands into heart, slight bend into the knees, hinge at the hips. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale to fold. This time, step back into tabletop pose. Press back, extended child pose. Take a breath in. And sigh all the air out of the mouth. Notice, feel the hips press back toward the heels and just take a moment to observe. Observe the space you created so far in the body. Next inhale, tabletop pose. If you're practicing down dog today, press your hips up toward the sky to come into a down dog. If you're skipping down dog, a few variations. You can do forward fold with blocks underneath your hands at the front of your mat. And you'll bend and straighten through one knee at a time. Those of you in down dog, you'll pedal out through the feet and bend and straighten through one knee at a time. 
if you're curious to do a down dog and it's not something that that is a part of your practice you can always come to the wall if you take a look at me i'll show you hands come to the wall directly out from the shoulders we walk the feet back so that they're in line with the hips and we make an upside down l shape you can bend and straighten through one knee at a time try to keep your arms as straight as you can if you're at the wall and you'll notice that this helps you with balance, if balance can be something that is challenging for you. Those of you in down dog, lower down to your knees. Those of you in forward fold, come back to your hands and your knees. Those of you at the wall, meet us in tabletop pose. Now shift your hips forward so you're in knee down plank. Those of you at home that want to do a little bit more, you'll curl the toes and press the hips up to come into high plank. Plank is not something that you like to practice. Please stay in your knee down plank. Shift forward so your shoulders are over your wrists regardless of which plank you've chosen. Exhale to lower down to the belly, the chest, and the chin for prone pose. Feet are hips with distance apart, palms under the shoulders, elbows squeeze into the ribs. Inhale with the head, chest, and shoulders, low cobra. Exhale down to release. Inhale again for a low cobra. Exhale, lower back and down. Inhale, use your hands to press yourself up. And then come to seated on your mat. And meet me in a cross-legged seated pose. So we've been working quite a bit this practice on finding balance of the body. We're going to do a little something here that is going to challenge your abdominal muscles. And this is a variation of Navasana boat pose. And I have a few different variations that I'm gonna to teach today just about where we can learn how to honor ourselves where we are. And our abdominal muscles are something that are really, really important to, to keep strong. And I, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about the core. This entire practice has been about the entire core. Our core is not just this one area. It consists from our hips all the way up. Actually, it starts here, but I'm not gonna get into all that right now. But it's really important that, you know, we, we honor learning something that can be a little bit challenging for us. So extend your, bring your, your feet uh, to the mat with the knees bent. Now, in the Vasana, what you can do for a very beginner variation is bring your hands behind the backs of the thighs. You can lift one leg at a time and lower that foot down. You can lift the other leg at a time and lower that foot down. If you want a little bit more challenge, you're gonna to come to lean back, but we don't wanna round. We wanna lean back so that you're balancing on your gluteal muscles. You can keep your feet here even if you have just that little bit of a lean back. You can also grab onto a block and you can set your feet to the block and then do that lean. And that's gonna help you to learn how to keep the chest lifted. And you'll feel that the abdominal muscles are still working even though there's a block underneath the feet. If you wanna go a little further, we keep the hands here, chest stays lifted, and we've got our, our gluteal muscles are helping us here. You can feel that all the muscles that we've just opened and found space in are working right now. For those of you that want to go a little further, you release your arms, let your chest lift. Can you take two more rounds of breath, whatever version you've chosen. Bring the hands back, lower the feet down, hallelujah. Bring the soles of the feet together for Vata Konasana. Knees will go out wide. And when you want to bring your feet closer together, what we want to remember is we don't want to pull the feet into our, our, our buttocks here. We want to bring our pelvis to our feet. That's going to take some of the pain that uh, can occur in the knees. So we bring the hands behind us and then we lift our buttocks up and then you can come closer. And your knees will tell you, that's about enough. I don't want to go any closer. 
Take index finger and middle finger, bring them together and wrap them around the big toes. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to hinge forward. And when we hinge, we don't round the spine, we wanna keep the chest lifted. Take breath into the belly and sigh the air out. Close the eyes and we'll take five more rounds of breath here. Use your hands, gently press into the big toes, let your chest lift. Extend your legs out in front of you. Maybe the arms come out in front of you, lower down onto the spine. Let your knees come into your chest once you get down onto your back. Take a little rock side to side, massage the back. Now grab onto your strap with your right knee into your chest. Place your strap on the sole of the right foot and extend the right leg out toward the sky. Supta Padangustasana. Send the left leg long. Take breath into the belly once more. Relax the muscles of the face. If it doesn't feel comfortable lengthening through left leg, please keep your left knee bent. Now if you have a strap, you'll take it and you'll shimmy it. And sole the foot. You can let it move all the way to the ball of the foot. And I'll tell you, if you don't have a strap, you're gonna want one or a belt because this feels amazing. Really nice to release the lymphatic system. You just kind of remind the body that we're coming into a, a down regulation state in our practice. Now come back to stillness. Take another breath in. And as you exhale, remove the strap and lengthen your right leg. to a full body stretch by fingers point toes. Exhale, sigh all the air out of the body. Left knee comes into the chest, bring the forehead up to the left knee, Ardha Apanasana. Inhale to a full body stretch. Exhale, sigh all the air out and release. Second side, right knee bends. Left knee comes into the chest. You place the strap on the sole of the left foot. Extend the leg. Now decide, do you wanna keep your right knee bent? Do you need that extra support for the right hip? Or can you send that right leg long, lengthen through the hamstrings, press out through the heel? It doesn't mean that you're gonna get any more benefit if you have the knee bent or the leg long. It's really what feels like something you wanna explore in your body. We'll create that little shimmy here. Now for those of you that have your right leg long, you can really feel that the abdominal muscles are working, even though this is cooling down posture. And then come back to center, inhale to lengthen the left leg. Exhale, remove the strap, lower it down. Set your strap off to the side. Inhale to a full body stretch. Exhale, happy baby pose. Grab onto either insides or outside edges of the feet. Relax the collarbones. Send the, the sacrum down toward the mat. Take breath into the belly. Sigh the air out of the mouth. Feel the collarbones broaden. If it feels nice, take a little rock side to side. happy baby pose is a balancing pose. This pose really brings awareness to if we're if we're favoring one side or the other. Maybe we lean more to the right or more to the left and how can we find that balance? Let the shoulders relax away from the ears, collarbones broaden. 
One more breath in. Sigh all the air out of the mouth. Bring your knees up to your chest. Transition into sacral circle. Circle the knees together in one direction. to take three more rounds in the reverse direction. Lower the feet down. If you need a blanket for your head, please place a blanket under your head. Take your arms out to your sides. Relax the backs of the hands down. Drop the knees to the right. Turn your head to the left. Lunge your leg in. Come back to center on the inhale. Drop your knees to the left and turn your head to the right. Come on back to center. Lengthen through the left leg. Lengthen through the right leg. Let the eyes close if you haven't already done so. And prepare your body for Shavasana. Remember, if you like props, to please offer a blanket behind the knees, under the head, or a bolster or a pillow behind the knees. Maybe a soft cloth or an eye pillow over the eyes to let the lightness in the room take that lightness away and to give you a little bit more support. moment to get yourself comfortable. Feel that the heels drop in towards each other and the feet away from one another. And feel the earth holding your body. Feel all this space that we discovered in our body today. Let that space gently carry you off to a very restful, peaceful Shavasana.
You notice this quiet space within you. And sense all the quiet spaces that are within your body. Feel the balance. The balance of the breath, the mind, and the body. the fingers and wiggle the toes. Take an inhale to a full body stretch, point fingers, point toes. When you exhale, bring your right knee into your chest. Bring your left knee into your chest and roll your body to your right hand side. Stay here for a moment as you rest your left hand to the center of your heart. Thank yourself for taking this time, taking this time to connect to you and to really find that awareness of balance. Use your hands to press yourself up and come into a comfortable seated pose facing the front of the room. Bring your hands into heart center, close your eyes and gently bow your chin into your chest as you take another moment here to honor yourself. This practice of yoga doesn't end the minute we leave the mat. It's actually when our practice begins. When we practice yoga, these, these asana poses in our yoga practice, what they do is these postures teach our body and they help our body to see that when there are those challenging moments in life that are very similar to our yoga practice, they teach us that we can take this practice with us off the mat and into our life, the big mat of life. And maybe when we're having those moments where we're feeling a little bit of out of balance, out of balance this practice will be in the body and it will be that awareness and the breath will go back and go, oh yeah, remember that? We were able to do that. We can do anything regardless of what is making you feel off balance. Thank you all for allowing me to come into your home and for watching my videos. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. I look forward to the next video, recording the next video for you, and to when I get to see you all again real soon in person. Have a really beautiful rest of your day. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, and for joining in my channel. Bye, everyone.